Molecules with one or more stereocenters have a so-called pair of enantiomers. Unfortunately, there are many methods to define such molecules. This often leads to a lot of confusion among the students. I will explain today which nomenclature you can use in which situation. What are stereoisomers again? Two molecules with the same molecular formula and the same atom-to-atom -atom connectivity but with a different spatial arrangement of the atoms are stereoisomers. For instance, a molecule with a C atom that holds four different substituents is a stereocenter. A molecule with a stereocenter is often chiral. There is a molecule that is the exact mirror image. Such a pair of isomers is called enantiomers. Two enantiomers are not superimposable. There are different nomenclatures in the context of stereoisomers. S and R, L and D, plus and minus, and just to make it more confusing, the lowercase L and D. Erythrose is chiral and therefore it possesses two enantiomers, the so-called D erythrose and L erythrose. Erythrose has two stereocenters. We can define both these stereocenters independently with the so-called CIP nomenclature. This is the R and S nomenclature. Each substituent of a chiral C atom receives a certain priority. The atomic number of the neighboring atoms defines the priority of these substituents. The neighbor with the highest atomic number for this carbon is oxygen. It receives priority 1. Next we have two carbon atoms as neighbors. They have the same atomic number, therefore we look at the next atoms. The left carbon atom holds a carbon, oxygen and a hydrogen as neighbors and the aldehyde has a hydrogen and a double bond to an oxygen atom. The double bond counts for two oxygen atoms, therefore the right carbon atom gets a higher priority. Hydrogen has the smallest atomic number and therefore it always receives the lowest priority. Take care that the atom with the lowest priority shows away from you. Then you can connect the first three atoms with a circle. If the arrow turns clockwise to the right, we have an R stereocenter. Now we turn the molecule so that the hydrogen atom on the second stereocenter shows away from us. Again, you can assign priorities and you see that this stereocenter turns clockwise as well. How do we know whether this compound is the D erythrose or the L erythrose? We can use the Fischer projection for this problem. The carbon atom with the highest oxidation number is always at the top of this projection. We can turn the bonds so that all the horizontal groups show towards us out of the screen. Both OH groups show to the right. To assign L and D, you only have to look at the lowest stereocenter. Again, the substituents receive a certain priority according to their atomic number. In this case, the substituent with the highest priority shows to the right. Therefore, we can call this molecule the D erythrose. The exact mirror image of this structure is the L erythrose, because the lowest OH group shows to the left in this case. Now we are left with the plus and minus nomenclature. We can only get this nomenclature experimentally. The plus and minus indicate the optical rotation of polarized light. If an enantiomer rotates polarized light clockwise, it has the plus configuration. If the polarized light is rotated counterclockwise, it has the minus configuration. In a case where we have a one-to-one -one mixture of two enantiomers, the plus and minus rotation cancel each other out and we wouldn't see an optical rotation in that case. Very rarely the plus sign is replaced by a lowercase d and the minus sign by a lowercase l. This often leads to a confusion with the uppercase letters, however. You can now assign the different nomenclatures for each molecule. The R and S nomenclature shows the absolute configuration of each stereocenter. 
The LND nomenclature distinguishes between two enantiomers that often contain more than one stereocenter. The plus and minus signs indicate the optical rotation of polarized light. It is important for you to understand that you cannot extrapolate from one nomenclature to the others. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions or feedback, write a comment in the section below. If you haven't studied enough yet, subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.